let's talk about the marijuana. An ounce of marijuana at fifty to a hundred dollars is a standard size purchase. It will make about forty joints and last from two weeks to a month. If you sat down and smoked it all at once, you would probably wake up with a headache and your mouth would taste like a family of hippies had camped there all night, but you'd be all right. A standard prescription purchase of Tranxine, Elevil, Xanax, Valium, Secanol, Quaalude, Placidil, Tuanol, or a dozen other so-called tranquilizers, antidepressants, and psych meds may run in the same general price and they're intended to last about the same time. By the standards used to judge the marijuana, these drugs are technically not medicine at all. They cure no illness, they must continually be used, and they are intended to provide the same things that the pothead seeks. Mood elevation, relaxation, freedom from anxiety, a mild euphoric, and sleep. But if you take all of that single purchase of any of those at once, every one of them will kill you. The marijuana is declared to be so dangerous that the pot peddler is locked up, stripped of his liberty, his voting franchise, security clearance, bondability, insurability, pilot's license, firearm ownership, and whatever property or vehicles he might happen to own. The kill pill pusher is a respected citizen with a secure income and all of law enforcement preventing anyone from competing with his business. Question. Why are the illegal drugs the ones which we can grow and use ourselves? without a CEO, stockholders, a manufacturer, inspector, packager, advertiser, wholesaler, physician, pharmacist, and tax collector being involved in the deal. Is marijuana banned because it grows free and none of those guys gets his protected piece of the action?